Well, welcome back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. Our topic today that we're going to be looking into is volcanoes. Now, some people and even churches teach that volcanoes that are erupting today around the world indicate that the time of the end is approaching. The more frequent they think volcanoes are happening, they think that indicates that uh, the end of time is approaching. So what do you think? Do you think volcanoes today are an indication of this? Now here's an interesting picture of Mount Tambora in Indonesia. The date of this eruption is uh, unknown. I don't know when this occurred, but this is a very uh, a graphic illustration of how a volcano erupts. Now this next picture is from my web, uh, from my computer in my house in Tennessee. And this is a picture of Mount Etna on the island of Sicily. And you can see that it's a very peaceful looking setting. It's got a little village here in the foreground. And you can see Mount Etna in the uh, background there with snow on its uh, top of it. This is taken during the uh, winter months. I took this, I believe, uh, about a month ago. And uh, right now, this is March, of course. So you can see a little wisp of smoke at the top of the mountain. And I believe that's probably steam coming off the mountain. And uh, we can see the things are kind of peaceful looking. Well, this next picture here was taken about uh, three weeks ago. And you can see that the mountain was erupting. And that was a pretty interesting thing to, to see. It's kind of fun to in a sense to look at it on your your webcam on your computer here in Tennessee and see a live volcano uh, erupting around uh, in Europe or in this case Mount Etna in Sicily. So let's take a look at this video. It's very the graphic. It shows the uh, volcano erupting and the lava flowing and it's very hot and uh, you would think this is extremely dangerous. But has it been dangerous over the, the years and the century that this volcano has been erupting? So how many people have been killed by eruptions on Mount Etna? Well, one study I, I found says that this is one of the questions to be most uh, easily answered. It says Etna is definitely not a killer volcano. Very few people have been killed by eruptions of Mount Etna. So over the years, about going back to 1500 BC, now that's 3,500 years ago, so that's a very long time. So going back to 1500 BC, there has been 77 confirmed deaths. So the, uh, the, the eruptions from Mount Etna are rarely violently explosive, and lava flows slowly allowing people to leave long before the lava front uh, arrives at their homes. So virtually all cases of human fatalities uh, on Mount Etna have been uh, due to the fact that people wanted to stick around and not uh, escape and save their lives. So Mount Etna is spectacular when it erupts, uh, but not that many people have been killed by it. Now let's take a look at this chart here. This is a chart of volcanic eruptions that has been uh, compiled. And I got this from uh, Wikipedia. And it says human death toll on the top here. And on the right hand side, you can see the year. And starting back in 1815, Mount Tambora in Indonesia, there were between 71,000 and 250,000 people uh, that were killed by the, that eruption back in eight, uh, 1815, yeah. Then another one, Krakatoa, which is a really famous uh, volcano, again in Indonesia, and that was in the year 1883. And they say here that 36,000 people uh, were killed in that uh, eruption and it says most of the deaths were uh, not attributed to the eruption itself. Then there were some other eruptions where 30,000 people were killed and 
uh, 23,000, etc. So over the years, there have been really major eruptions around the world that have killed people much greater than uh, the Mount Etna that I look at regularly. So the question I have, and I did a little research on this, is can earthquakes trigger volcanic eruptions? In other words, you have an earthquake, but does that cause an eruption, okay? Well, the experts claim that some, they say sometimes yes. A few large regional earthquakes greater than magnitude six are related to a subsequent eruption or to some type of unrest in a nearby volcano. However, volcanoes can only be triggered by eruptions by nearby tectonic earthquakes uh, that are already poised to erupt. And by the way, tectonic earthquakes, you know that the earth is like, uh, like an egg, you might say, and there are various segments of that, of the earth that are connected together, like the various pieces of a, if you were to crack an egg open, it has various pieces of the shell. So each piece of that shell is called a tectonic uh, part of the earth. So when one of these tectonic pieces move, then volcanoes around the around the edges mostly of that tectonic uh, plate will trigger uh, volcanoes to erupt. So it says here, number one, the reasons that they will erupt are two conditions. One, they have enough eruptible magna, that's liquid rock, uh, within the volcano system. And number two, there is sufficient pressure within the magna storage region uh, below in the earth. It's like a gigantic, um, oh, you might say a gigantic lake of liquid uh, magma down in the earth. And that's looking for some route to, to go up to the surface of the earth and erupt in a volcano. So if these conditions exist, it goes on and says, it's possible that large tectonic earthquakes might dislodge gases to come out of the magna. And uh, it's like a, a bottle of, of soda that you might, you might grab it and you might shake it up and take the top off and all that soda and fizz comes bubbling out of it. Well, that's what an earthquake is basically is. There's gas contained within the uh, magma and when it finds an outlet at the surface of the earth, that's when it shoots up in the air and that leads to an eruption. Well, how does all this relate back to prophecy? Well, if, if we uh, think about the upcoming Great Tribulation, now I have other videos on this and you can look at them, but I believe it's going to last 1,335 days. And when that Great Tribulation starts, it's gonna, we're going to see something very interesting. It says in the, uh, Revelation 8, 5, and it talks about the start of the 1,335 days. It says, And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar in the sanctuary, from the sanctuary, and cast that censer into the earth. And there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Now, this is going to be not just a small, if you will, regional earthquake. Now, they're not small, obviously, I know that. But this is going to be an earthquake that goes around the world. So all these various tectonic plates are going to be jiggled by this sensor being cast down. And these tectonic plates uh, will cause earthquakes at the, on their, their edges to uh, explode. So there will be volcanoes erupting all around the earth. Now think about this. You know about the Pacific Ocean and the Great Ring of Fire. That tectonic plate goes all the way up the east coast of the United States, or west coast, excuse me, the west coast of the United States up into Alaska. And then it comes down across China, Japan, Indonesia. So that whole uh, ring of fire is just loaded with volcanoes. So if that tectonic plate is jiggled by this angel casting the sensor down on earth, 
there will be many, many volcanoes erupting. So let's take a look at another text here before we close. You can turn in your Bible if you want to Luke 21. And I'm going to read this, all right? And it says, it starts at verse 7. It says, teacher. Now that's talking to Jesus, the disciples. And they ask, then will these things, when will these things happen? And what will be the sign that they're about to take place? And Jesus replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. But do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. So God is telling us to be brave. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Then he said to them, nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilence in various places, and powerful events and great signs from heaven. But before all of this, will, they will seize you and persecute you, and they will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all account on account of my name, so you will bear testimony to me, of, of, uh, to me, but make up your mind not to worry. I like that. But make up your mind not to worry beforehand. How will you defend yourself? So God is telling us, don't worry how we're going to defend ourselves when we're brought, brought in front of these people. It says, for I, Jesus, will give you words and wisdom. That's going to be words and wisdom just in time as we need it. And none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict your testimony. Wow, isn't that something? And you, you, but it says you will be betrayed even by parents, brothers, sisters, relatives, and friends. And they will put some of you to death. Well, that's not good, is it? Some of us are going to die martyrs during this time. And everyone will hate you because of me. But then it says something unusual here. It says, but not a hair on your head will perish. Then it says, stand firm and you will win eternal life. Well, what I think Jesus is talking about here, that you're here will not be, perish, is that he will resurrect you when he comes in glory, in the clouds of glory. And he will, if you're a martyr, he will resurrect you from the grave and you will meet him up in the clouds. And so we will have eternal life with Jesus. Well, that's a little bit of thoughts on volcanoes today. So I hope you've gotten a blessing from that. So come back tomorrow and we'll see what's up with prophecy today again. Thanks for watching. <laughs>